we're cool. Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speaker is Barton Moxness. Barton is an entrepreneur and local Vancouver native. He is the founder and president of Limitless AV Inc. This firm helps corporate clients design, build, and integrate audiovisual communication solutions designed for workplace collaboration. During the course of Barton's presentation, if you have questions, please type them into the chat and at natural pauses in Barton's talk, I will, uh, ask, I will pose the questions of him. Uh, welcome Barton, uh, take it away, she's all yours. Awesome, thank you Roger, thank you for hosting me and uh, hello to the Vancouver Business Network. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Tonight, uh, we're gonna uh, review how to build strong online relationships. And we're gonna cover a few uh, key pieces of that. So the, we're gonna look at how to engage clients effectively online, what that looks like. We're going to um, look at staying connected using video communication technology. And we're also going to look at some tips for optimizing video conference communication. So we, let's talk about the new reality of work. So being in a post-COVID world, if we can call it that at this point, we're, we're very limited in the way that we can communicate. Many of us are uh, locked in uh, inside, we're working from home. Face-to-face um, -face opportunities are limited or simply out of the question uh, for many of us with our clients and colleagues. And, um, all communication is really limited to email, telephone, and or video conferencing. So this creates a, a massive challenge. And um, this evening, we're gonna, we're gonna look at some ways that we can navigate this. How can my business navigate and adapt? Well, we're using one of those platforms right now. Um, Zoom Video Communications is a fantastic platform that's easily accessible and has really taken off um, in, in, during COVID-19 and beyond. Um, but that's not the only uh, web conferencing platform that we can utilize to uh, collaborate and communicate online with our clients and our colleagues. We have Microsoft Teams, BlueJeans, Cisco WebEx, Google Meet, GoToMeeting, the list goes on and on and on. I'm sure some in the audience tonight have used these different platforms. Um, they have been around for quite a while and they all offer uh, very competitive advantages um, to um, you know, a normal telephone call or an email correspondence back and forth. How do these platforms benefit our businesses? Well, through digital face-to-face -face communication. So it's really the next best thing that we have to being able to meet face-to-face -face, uh, in an office setting or going for coffee with a client um, or meeting together um, all together as part of like an all hands meeting or something like that. You also get very, very powerful tools built into these platforms like presentation sharing, like we're, we're doing right now, whiteboarding, so we can, uh, we can collaborate and annotate, um, and other tools like uh, polling and uh, raising our hand for, for questions and, uh, and a number of other uh, features. These platforms can also accommodate not just one-to-one -one communication, but also one-to-many. So, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, we can connect and communicate effectively using these platforms, um, whether it's on, uh, you know, on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or another platform. And we don't all have to meet together. We can, as, as we're demonstrating right now tonight at um, Vancouver Business Network, um, we've adapted to be in our own homes or, or our, uh, our spaces so that we can connect all together and, and collaborate and communicate and uh, share ideas. So very, very powerful, powerful tools that we have at our disposal. So we're gonna talk about some best practices for online video communication. Um, I'm gonna show a brief video here uh, in a minute and um, let me know afterwards if this is something or if you've ever experienced a call where you've been on with a client or a colleague or family member and something like this may have happened. There's no audio here. Can anyone hear any audio? No, no audio. No, no audio on it? 
what I can do is I can probably bring it up on my, my computer. This will get you the, the general sense of uh, what can happen in a video call though. I sure hope no one has had the embarrassment of uh, something like that happening to them. So that can happen in a video conference meeting, and I'm sure some of those experiences have happened. They are very funny, but they're not necessarily um, uh, beneficial for building strong online relationships. Uh, many times, we uh, first impressions do mean mean a lot, and uh, unfortunately, when something like that happens, it can tarnish our reputation and uh, you know potentially harm our business relationships um, or even working with with colleagues and clients in the future. So we're gonna talk about some steps that for best practices, and we're gonna start with scheduling our meeting. So scheduling your meeting is a very, very important part of uh, collaborating online successfully and building those strong relationships. There are tools to schedule meetings through calendar invitations, through Google Calendar, through, um, through Exchange, through Outlook, and many other platforms that people are utilizing daily to keep track of their schedule. Through these platforms, um, I encourage everyone, and we're gonna go through a few steps um, with an example through uh, Google Calendar on how to successfully um, utilize extensions from um, Zoom or Microsoft Teams or these other platforms to create links, to invite guests, and to send that so that when it is time to meet with someone, um, you can quickly and efficiently um, be assured that they are going to be able to connect and communicate with you effectively. Um, many times what can happen is if things are not scheduled properly, um, it can be a challenge for people to connect. Maybe there's extra downloads they have to do or uh, other hoops that they have to connect to. And that can cause delays, challenges, and make it, uh, make it a bit, a bit difficult for, um, for us to connect and communicate efficiently. So on this screen, um, this is my Google Calendar. So in my Google Calendar, I'm setting up a, a proposal meeting with Sam. When I go into my Google Calendar, some of you may use this, some of you may use other calendar um, uh, systems or platforms like um, Office 365, which has Exchange or Outlook. And it's very similar in those, in those platforms. But for today, we're gonna use Google as an example. So you'll see here that you can add a Google Meet video conferencing meeting. That's one option that's baked right into Google and you have right at your disposal. So Google Meet is an alternate to Zoom, but also allows you to communicate with hundreds of participants and it easily integrates into, um, into Google Calendar and Gmail. You also have, with adding an extension like Zoom to your Google Calendar or Google Chrome, um, you can make it a Zoom meeting. So with a quick download, you can add this ability so that you can add Zoom capabilities into your Google Calendar invites that you're sending out. You'll note this button that says more options. So when you're scheduling your meeting, you'll wanna click more options and it will lead you to this page. What this page allows you to do is to add details, add links, any pertinent information, attachments. But for this case, the great thing about using uh, make it a Zoom meeting is when you click that button, it'll automatically populate everything to do with Zoom. So um, you'll notice that in the location bar, you'll have a direct link to that meeting for your client or your colleague to connect with you. 
Additionally, it'll also add another link down below for convenience, along with the meeting ID, password, and, and dial-in numbers should someone want to connect with a, a normal telephone. Don't forget to add your guests. Um, when you add an email address, you want to add all your participants and they'll all be sent that link. When you click save, that will send your meeting invitation to your clients. So when it is time for their meeting, it will remind them, they'll be able to click the link, join the meeting, and you'll be able to begin. Another key uh, thing to mention about scheduling your meeting is make sure you consider the amount of time your meeting is. Burnout via video conferencing is a real thing and we're all experiencing it right now with uh, COVID-19 and working from home. Many times there's days that I go where I have six, seven, eight Zoom meetings in a day and it can be very, very stressful and tiring. But especially when it adds to, um, when, it, when they add up to a single meeting being more than say 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you really want to keep your meetings concise um, make sure that you're well prepared and leave a little bit of time open for your client or your colleague to um, ask questions and expand upon um, your conversations um, and leave that door open. But um, something to really keep in mind in this new, um, uh, this new post COVID world where everyone is communicating online all the time. The second point is to dress professionally. Who of us have woken up and joined a Zoom meeting or uh, a variation of a Zoom meeting looking like this? Or maybe at the beginning of uh, when we were working from home, you know, we felt like Chris Hemsworth in Thor. And then by day five, we looked like that. Or what about if we've ever joined a meeting with someone where they're in their bedroom living room, but they haven't made their bed, their clothes are all over the floor, and their room looks something like this. Is that effective for building a strong relationship? Well, definitely not. So it's something to definitely keep in mind that we want to dress professionally. Uh, I'm doing my best example of, of trying to dress professionally this evening. Um, doesn't always require wearing a suit and tie, but um, and sometimes we might be uh, business on top and in our underwear down below, but it's something definitely that we want to um, ensure that we're, we're taking full advantage of and we're considering before joining a meeting. The next tip is to utilize a company branded virtual background. So many of us, um, you can note that uh, my virtual background here, uh, I have limitless audio vis visual integration. Um, I've created that uh, just with a, with a, a normal program um, many of our, uh, many companies have people that uh, can create these or you can make your own customized ones. You'll note uh, Roger uh, this evening, he has his Vancouver Business Network meetup. Um, and uh, there's many different ways to do so. Some of them are funny and you can definitely use that to, um, depending on your uh, selecting your clients and, and work, who you work with, um, that may help build a strong relationship, but it's always, um, in your best interest to use a company branded professional background to um, you know, make it appear that uh, you're, you're a part of an organization um, when we're not able to meet face to face and, and build strong relationships that way. You'll also want to ensure that you have a distraction free environment. Who of us have, uh, I'm sure many of us have kids, uh, families, uh, maybe uh, roommates or uh, other loved ones in the house and they can, uh, they can from time to time create a distraction. This next video, I'm hoping the audio works, but if it doesn't, it will get the point across. This is a BBC interview gone wrong.
could you sense the the emotion? It didn't even require audio to see the look on uh, on the interviewee's face when um, his children uh, interrupted the meeting in the background. Um, it's definitely good for a laugh, but you could definitely uh, see that that really affected and he was having difficulty composing himself. So we want to take every opportunity to ensure that we have a distraction free environment. And some tips for that is, is just letting people know in your household that you're going to be having a meeting, that you require silence and, and some peace. If you have a separate room that you can utilize for video conferencing, you know, please do so. Um, it, it makes all the difference when, when having meetings um, and building strong online relationships. The next point is position yourself effectively to optimize eye contact. So many of us, um, I'm sure we've joined with loved ones or other friends or colleagues and we join a meeting and you see up someone's nose. Maybe the, maybe the camera on, the, on, the, uh, on their laptop is positioned at the keyboard and facing upwards. It's not optimal, it's not ideal, and good communication starts with making eye contact, um, especially in a visual uh, orientation um, like video conferencing is. Here's an example of a, a laptop stand that uh, shows a gentleman positioned in front of the laptop um, with the camera at eye level. So um, in this application, I'm also using a camera that's at eye level, um, and, you, and as I talk to the camera, um, the participants in the room will get a more uh, immersive experience and, um, and, and build connection that way. The next point is utilizing peripherals and accessories to enhance audio and video quality. Um, as we've experienced uh, through VBN this evening, um, there, there's times when you know, a laptop or a cell phone may not provide the, uh, the optimal audio or video quality um, to to build strong online relationships and connect with people. Uh, things like audio dropouts or you know, poor audio can really, really affect a call. So we're gonna review a few products that are available um, that, are, that are from a number of manufacturers. Um, and we're gonna go through the different parts and pieces that can help um, make your video conference call uh, effective, streamlined, and optimized. Martin, would you like to take a question before you talk about peripherals? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, question from Hemant. Does Google Meet have a virtual background option? That's a great question. I don't believe it does. I believe the only platforms that have a virtual background option are Zoom and Microsoft Teams. That being said, um, Google Meet is a completely free platform. Um, so that's a very nice feature. And I'm very confident that in short order, they will release an update that will enable virtual backgrounds. That's it. That's the only question thus far. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll pick it back up with peripherals and we're going to start with webcams. Um, video is often the, the first thing that people think of when it comes to video conferencing. One great product that's available, a um, little bit on short supply with, uh, in the COVID, uh, post-COVID world, but um, you can access them, is the Logitech Brio. Now Logitech makes a wide variety of uh, peripherals, uh, accessories, anything from keyboards to mice to uh, cameras and headsets. And we're gonna cover a few of those peripherals that, that uh, can help your business to excel and to help you build strong online relationships. The Logitech Brio is a, a small camera that can sit on top of your computer monitor and be positioned and it will provide you 4K uh, image quality so that um, your video is clear um, and there's no distortion. You can also position that effectively so that you can make it at eye level um, and it's not gonna be facing up, at, uh, up your nose or uh, up your chin um, and show um, other camera angles that are less optimal. Also, another accessory for, um, for video conferencing is ring lights. So this is an example of a ring light you'll see in the background here. Um, and what this does is this provides optimal lighting for your room so that when you're in a conference call, you look, uh, you know, you look full of life, uh, the image is not washed out, and it can really do a lot. Even with a, a poor quality web camera or an older web camera, it can do a lot to make that image look tremendously better. So always, always recommended to consider lighting as part of, uh, of the video portion 
Sometimes that means just putting a light in behind or, or in front of your computer monitor that can make all the difference when talking about video. Leading into audio, there's a number of different uh, aspects of audio and, and earlier in, in the, tonight's uh, networking, um, someone mentioned about audio quality issues with live streaming. There are many products that will help alleviate some of those uh, you know, nasty echoes or reverberations, um, distortion, uh, and just really, you know, when you get those in a video call, um, it can really tarnish the video call and create a lot of havoc. So you really want to consider audio. Um, there is a reason potentially why in audiovisual or AV, audio comes before video, because it is more important. Um, if, if you can't hear what I'm saying right now, our communication is greatly limited and you're forced to lip read, which is very challenging. So you definitely want to consider audio when um, looking at peripherals and running video conferencing sessions with your clients and your colleagues. One of those options is the Logitech Zone Wireless. There's a number of different headsets from Jabra to Bose. All of them can be excellent, excellent options or little ear, earbud pieces as well can provide directional audio. Really what we look for here is, is the microphone coming close to your mouth and making sure that you have a, a clear direct line of speaking into that microphone. That also avoids any um, surrounding noises. So if you have children or you know um, there's loud noises in the background construction maybe if you live downtown or in a in an area of high traffic um, it can make a make a huge difference to audio quality another option is a tabletop microphone solution like the blue yeti microphone this is also a logitech manufactured product um, but this is really popular amongst live streamers online you can pick these up very easily and they're readily accessible via Amazon and other major retailers, but it's a simple USB plug-in connection to your laptop and it can provide uh, premium audio pickup for um, anything from web conferencing calls to live streaming and it's an excellent, excellent solution. Additionally, um, a tabletop microphone. So Yamaha manufactures these small mini microphones I actually have one here it's not going to really show up in the in the video with the virtual background but you'll see her uh this woman talking into uh the yamaha yvc so this is a a tabletop conferencing device that's wireless has bluetooth can also connect into a computer and uh, provides uh, just a, a little bit better audio quality um, than maybe your laptop or um, a headset. It's also great when there's multiple people around, so you can position this effectively to capture everyone um, if you're having, if you, there's more than one person uh, in your setting and you're communicating. Um, maybe someone wants to leave a comment in the, uh, in the chat window. What, uh, in this picture here, what could be optimized based on um, uh, some of the points I mentioned uh, based on the positioning of, uh, uh, of the girl in the picture? Does anyone have any feedback? Maybe Roger, you can uh, you can read some of them if anyone uh, if anyone got the right answer. Uh, Kev uh, said eye level engagement, and there's a uh, uh, Jackie said she's looking down and not at eye level. So I think you've all got the point. Yep, you got it. You got it. So lifting that laptop up. Um, she's looking down, that, that camera is getting, getting a poor angle of her um, and that can cause uh, a challenge for, for video capture and, and it's not optima, optimal, so. Martin, we have a couple of questions. Let me know when you're ready to field them. I'm ready right now. Okay, uh, two questions, of, well, really a, a virtual background. Uh, Carolyn says Canva has free virtual background customization. Jackie, Sorry, I don't think I... no, that was just a statement. Okay. Jackie asks, can a background be created on Canva? I'm not familiar with Canva, but um, to make my virtual background here, I simply used Microsoft Paint. Um, I implemented my logo and I chose my background color and then I saved it in a PNG format. 
and then uploaded it to Zoom in the settings menu. You'll see virtual background. You can add a file from your computer. It does take a little bit to play around with because you need to get it fitted, formatted uh, properly. But if you're interested in just getting a, a stock background, there's many options online now. If you type in uh, virtual background for Zoom on Google, you can download um, hundreds and hundreds of templates, some funny, some serious, um, some in different locations around the world. Um, but if, it is a, if Canva is a, um, a photo editing um, software, as long as you're saving that file into a, a JPEG or a PNG file, um, you shouldn't have any issue with uploading that to Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Hemant asks, would you recommend a microphone if we need to use for podcast or streaming live videos or games? That's a great question. So um, for streaming and uh, applications like that, if it was just yourself and you are in an in a environment, kind of like where I show the picture of the ring light, um, this is a really, really great option. Uh, going with a, uh, a Yeti microphone or something similar that's um, designed for studio applications or live streaming. You have some settings to play with that can make the audio very directional, or you can, if there's other people in the room, you can also make it omnidirectional, so it will capture a wider range of uh, audio pickup. Barton, what is the price range of the Yeti Blue? It's a good question. So they can range, the last time I checked, they can be anywhere between 100 and 200. Um, there are some more premium models, but um, you know, rest assured, if you are willing to spend in that price range, you're going to get a very, very professional product that's um, going to serve you well. John Chen asks, video sharing is usually problematic on Zoom because it doesn't share at high video frame rate, making it choppy. Is there an alternative? That's a, that's a good question. So Zoom actually, one of the things I didn't utilize for this is Zoom has a video optimization feature. Um, there is, uh, when you're sharing your screen, there's a little drop down menu and you can go to more, there's three dots. And then there's a button that says optimize video for full screen uh, or optimize uh, stream for a full screen video. And if you click that, what happens is it will optimize your computer to increase the frame rate. Um, there is a lot of data being transferred and you know, there's a lot of us joined uh, together. And so technology is progressing. It will continue to get better, but there are challenges. You know, uh, this evening we couldn't get audio to be transmitted and that could be by PowerPoint or that could be, be the Zoom platform not transmitting that audio. But um, that is the best way to do that is that um, either taking video out of the the presentation altogether and sharing it uh, in a separate link following that meeting. Um, but uh, as always, I always recommend uh, practice and preparation and making sure um, you can never practice them enough times. And, and I'm a good example this evening of uh, something not working after practicing even uh, all the dozens of times that I've uh, uh, tried to, to get this to work and it has been working. So. Sean asks, are there any virtual backgrounds on GoToMeeting? That's another great question. I don't believe GoToMeeting has virtual backgrounds. As I mentioned before, I believe that it, that virtual background technology is simply limited to Microsoft Teams and Zoom. Um, I know a lot of other companies, BlueJeans, uh, WebEx and things are all trying to catch up. Microsoft Teams just recently added virtual backgrounds uh, as of a few months ago. So they usually come in succession of one another and it's always a race to uh, uh, you know, achieve the latest and greatest and, uh, in innovation. Carolyn asks, how to get the audio to work being streamed through Zoom? How do you get the audio to work? So when you're streaming through Zoom, when you, when you are a participant, you have a, um, when you scroll to the bottom of your screen, you'll have a, what looks like a microphone icon. That can be used to mute and unmute yourself, but there's also a little arrow pointing up. When you click that arrow, um, you should get your audio options, which include your microphone that you select and your speakerphone. So um, sometimes these devices are the same thing. Like if you're using the, um, let's see here, if you're using the Yamaha, 
This is a, a speaker and a microphone built into one. Um, some our laptops also have microphones and speakers built into one. But things like the Yeti microphone is just a microphone. So you have to make sure to select that microphone as your default microphone and then select what speaker output device, whether you have headphones plugged in or whether you want the speaker audio to come through your TV or your computer. So those options should be listed there um, at the bottom of your screen. Ian Caddo asks, what are the privacy level levels between all the different video chat platforms? That's a, that's a really, really good question. Um, it, there are, um, you know, I'm sure many of you have seen uh, security concerns with Zoom and video Zoom bombing. Um, Zoom and these platforms have really, really upped their game with the security. Um, we always recommend using a password to protect your meeting if it's a highly sensitive meeting. Um, and most platforms, including GoToMeeting, um, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom, they all offer that as an option to, to do when you're setting up your meeting. So um, security, um, very, very secure. Um, it's very important to also look into each platform specifically in the security that they offer. Um, some organizations we work with are not able to utilize certain platforms because data is traversing over borders. So we might be having a call right here in Canada, but this information could be traversing into USA data centers. And Zoom does a good job of showing you if um, on your window, you should see a little, um, it looks like a little armored security icon in the top left of the window. And if you click that, it will actually tell you which data center you're, you're going through. Um, so something to keep in mind with highly sensitive information, um, but uh, in a lot of cases, things like GoToMeeting, um, that's actually a Canadian-based company uh, from what I understand. So that information never leaves the country when you're, when you're on that platform. So something to definitely consider and look into on the security standpoint. Follow-up comment from John Chen. Barton, I think there's something else you have to click to make Zoom share audio to. By default, it only shares screen. Um, that might be the case. Um, in earlier tests, uh, it just played the audio automatically. Um, but I, I was having an issue yesterday with my, uh, my embedded video into PowerPoint, um, losing the audio. So this is an issue that I've seen before. And fortunately, it, it happened this evening. But um, if you are playing a video on your screen and you're sharing that video, the audio should automatically come through. There are no further questions. Perfect. So um, we've covered some of the, the plug and play peripherals and accessories that can make um, your personal workspace a, uh, uh, an improved environment for video conferencing and to help you build strong relationships. But what about your business? Um, you know, many businesses are not equipped. You know, we, some people are returning to the office. They're returning to the workspace and their offices simply just aren't capable of connecting and collaborating using remote video communication. There are products that can help that. So if you are a business owner or connected with other business owners, you know, let them know. Those products do exist. They are available. One of those products is the Logitech Meetup. You'll see it at the, just above the, the text there. Um, it's a camera, microphone system, and speaker bar all in one. And it connects to a computer via one single USB cable. Um, it's a really, really powerful solution for very small huddle spaces. And it can range into, you know, four to six person meeting spaces. Of course, in uh, a post-COVID world, uh, you know, a 12 person meeting space now becomes potentially a four person meeting space. So it is dependent on the size of your room. For a little bit of a larger application where you have a larger meeting room or a larger boardroom, there is something called the Logitech Rally. So what the Rally is, it includes a camera, speaker bars, and my tabletop microphones, and is more designed for a larger eight to 24 person meeting room. Um, the camera that is pictured here just above the, the text there on screen is actually what we're using to film and, and present this evening. So it is a, a 4K camera and provides very, very good audio and video quality. Question from Hemant, cost of Logitech meetup, 
cost of Logitech Rally? Great question. So it is designed for businesses and it does come with a little bit more of a premium price tag. So a Logitech meetup is um, approximately $1,200 for that system. And a Logitech Rally system can range anywhere from uh, 3000 all the way for all the options can be upwards of $8,000. So there are, it is a, a more premium price solution and it's really designed for corporate meeting spaces and meeting rooms where um, video conferencing technology is a, a primary concern. No further questions. Perfect. So the, the, the next part of, uh, of a tip to optimize video communication and to collaborate effectively is to listen. Sounds like a very simple uh, thing, but I'm sure we've all been there where we've joined a meeting or a webinar of some sort. I know I'm a bad example because I'm doing a lot of talking this evening, but when we're having uh, interpersonal connections and communication, it's so important to listen. Many times I'm in sales, but I also come in contact with many sales individuals that can't stop talking and it can become a, a huge drain and very, very difficult to pay attention to. So to build strong online relationships, you really need to communicate and listen effectively. So that means, you know, um, asking, asking questions, listening for those answers, replying, and, and getting into the habit of listening first and, and speaking later. Part and parcel to that is when we do want to speak and we want, when we're in a, uh, a collaborative env online environment, we want to signal when to speak. Zoom has some really great features with raising your hand, um, which is excellent. There's the chat window, which we're utilizing this evening, which is when we signal when we want to speak. Um, and what it prevents is that uh, when we communicate online and we build these relationships, we're not talking over one another. Uh, many times when we uh, communicate via Zoom or other video conferencing platforms, uh, latency is a real thing. So as I'm speaking now, it takes time for my voice to traverse the internet and to reach your screen. So when people are talking simultaneously, it can create sudden and abrupt uh, stoppages and sometimes that's a little awkward so we want to definitely signal when to speak so as mentioned use the tools that zoom has or other web platforms or simply as roger demonstrated raise your hand so that someone could see you and call on you uh, especially in um, environments where there's a lot of people involved or more than one person you'll also want to utilize the built-in collaboration tools to your advantage. So these are the tools that are built in to the platforms that you're utilizing. Many of the platforms mentioned all carry very similar um, uh, tools. Some of these would include the following, screen sharing, polling, annotation, whiteboarding, and even remote control. So we can take over other people's computers, show them different things. Um, and by utilizing these tools, we really show that we we're in tune, we're, we're up to date, we've practiced, we've prepared, um, and, it, and it sets us apart from uh, other individuals who might be kind of new to the technology or haven't invested the time into learning. So it's a, a really, really pivotal uh, thing to, to utilize to your advantage and can really set you apart um, in building those online relationships. Now I wanna ask a question to the audience. What methods have you traditionally used to effectively build relationships? Um, in the chat window, or if anyone uh, wants to speak up, um, what, what I'm looking for is both pre-COVID, what did you use, and maybe even some examples of what you're doing post-COVID. And Roger, maybe you can read out again um, some answers that are coming into the chat window. Nothing so far. So um, I'll get the ball rolling. Sure. What I um, like to do, well, let's go, Hammond can go first. Oh, sorry, he's asking questions. Uh, cost, oh, meetups, A, something called ANF Rally. Oh, and the Rally camera, sorry, his meetups. Hester says, have a coffee and chat. Uh, Greg says, pre-COVID face-to-face after COVID phone plus LinkedIn. 
Carolyn says follow up. Sean says pre-COVID, I would have a conversation regarding the tutoring needs of the student. Post-COVID, this could be done online with both parent and student. Hemant says online workshops. John Chan says, I find Zoom to be most stable, best split screen video quality. Michael says trade shows, now virtual trade shows via Zoom or go to meeting. Hemant says master, mastermind online. Ashok says previously face to face and during COVID Zoom. Ed says Zoom meetings like VBN with Roger. Jackie says always pick up the phone, now Zoom network meetings. Ian Caddo says pre-COVID, I would attend lots of events and conferences during COVID, talking to existing clients, looking for new opportunities and referrals. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much everyone for, for your input uh, um, and answers. Um, that's, that is the reality of the, the situation for, for myself personally. Um, I'm, I'm very much a face-to-face -face person. I, I really enjoy meeting people face-to-face -face, um, and that's how I've traditionally built relationships. Also utilizing digital technology and, and someone mentioned LinkedIn. Um, these are really, really great tools that we have still to, to build business relationships. Um, you know, emails and telephone, those are the traditional methods as well. Um, but thinking of Zoom, um, there are some really creative ways uh, that we can uh, come together and maybe some of you have participated in some of these. Something as simple as a virtual coffee meeting. So um, one option is maybe send, if, if you have the option to meet with a client and, and be provided their address if they're willing, send them, uh, send them a, a bunch of coffee or something else that they might like to drink and you can join a, join a meeting with them and, and enjoy a coffee together virtually. Leading into that, um, what's all the rage right now, what people are, are loving is virtual happy hours. So this, this provides us a chance uh, to enjoy a beer or a glass of wine, whether it's a business colleague, uh, whether it's a client, um, bringing together people, um, which some of you may have participated in. And if you haven't, I encourage you to do so or utilize it to your advantage um, to really um, build those strong relationships separate yourself uh, from the pack and, uh, and, and enjoy each other's company. So it's a little a picture of what a virtual happy hour can look like. So now our offer to the Vancouver Business Network and online community. We're offering a complimentary 30 minute online consultation and needs assessment on a video conferencing platform of your choice. So that can be Zoom, GoToMeeting, Teams, Google Meet, Skype, you name the platform will be there. So what this will enable you to do is um, you know, address anything from uh, looking at some of these products, um, asking for recommendations for your work from home setup, Maybe your business or maybe someone you know um, could utilize some of the other business related products for their, their conference rooms or meeting spaces so that they can effectively um, optimize their video and audio quality to build these relationships with their clients. So that's what, that's what we're offering. And, and what you can do here is, is either take a screen cap or my contact information will also be provided. Um, I could be reaching and I encourage everyone to uh, give us a like and a follow on, on the major social media platforms. This will really give you a better idea of, uh, of the power of technology and what we can do to enable um, and assist businesses with their video conferencing and communication needs. Mark, Thank you. a question I, from Hemant. Uh, he's really uh, going to challenge you here. Barton, what are your thoughts about hologram in use? How far is it from being a mass product for use? Um, personally, I don't have much experience with uh, holograms. Um, things like virtual reality are becoming very, very popular. And it can really see that in the future, you know, things like virtual reality headsets and things will be able to uh, connect with people face-to-face um, -face in a digital format, which is, um, 
very exciting, I think. Um, it's, a, it's another way that we're moving forward and, and finding different ways to communicate uh, in this post-COVID world. And there's other things like augmented reality where things will, you know, you put glasses on and you can see things that uh, aren't actually there. Um, and that's very exciting technology. Um, holographic uh, imagery and augmented reality, I don't really see that being uh, uh, all that beneficial um, to video conferencing. However, um, I can definitely see things like virtual reality and VR becoming very, very popular. Um, anything from uh, dating or to uh, building relationships with clients to uh, virtual meetings through these headsets. Um, that's something that's very exciting um, and definitely something on the horizon. And there are no other questions. Excellent. Well, that brings us to the end of our presentation this evening.